So here's an example of RSA. It's going to be a very small number example, not anything like secure, but it gets it's going to get the point across. So we've got uh, oh yeah, and the warning as usual is with anything with modular exponentiation, don't just use any calculator or spreadsheet that happens to have a mod function, um, because as soon as you exponentiate, you're going to get a huge number. It's going to round, and then when you do the mod, it's going to be inaccurate. So you have to use something like Wolfram Alpha. Um, or do things by hand with repeated squaring, but that's more work than we probably want to do. Okay, so here's the plain text, OK Go, one of my favorite bands and also a pretty reasonable secret message that you'd uh, want to send. Uh, we plain texted it in the usual way. O is the 15th letter, K is the 11th, J is, G is the 7th, O is the 15th, so it's 1511, 715 of the two numbers we want to encrypt. And so what are the ingredients for um, an RSA implementation? You need two prime numbers. I picked 4761, uh, emulating a book problem. Um, and then the product is going to be one of the two key numbers. That's the modulus we're going to use when we actually do the encryption and decryption. That's 2867, just the product of those guys. And then really crucial is Euler's theorem comes in in a very important way. And so we need to know phi of n. Well, since it's the product of two primes, that's easy. It's just um, one less than 46 times one less than 60. And that's going to be 2760. Okay, so so far we just need to define two prime numbers and then do some calculations that don't require anything really fancy at all. Okay, now I wanted to pick something that was at least 2727 so that it would actually be able to fit all the numbers we get in these two letter blocks from, from the English alphabet. Okay, so this number's definitely got to be big enough that it fits any kind of um, number that you want to encrypt, but that's not usually the, the main obstacle. Okay, realistically, this, are, this is way too small because it's so easy to factor and therefore break the code even if, you don't know, even if you don't have the appropriate key. Okay, so the last piece is a choice of encryption exponent. That's something that can be somewhat independently chosen, um, but it better actually satisfy the hypotheses of Euler's theorem. So in particular, it had better be uh, relatively prime to phi of n, the 2760. Okay, and that's not hard to check, 2760 is not divisible by seven. Um, and since seven is prime, that's all you need. Okay, so um, we want to have that encryption exponent. We also want to be able to decrypt messages sent to us using this algorithm. Although, because it's a public key algorithm, um, we're not going to share all of this information with somebody who wants to send us messages. But the decryption exponent, that needs to be kept secret, along with the P and the Q and the phi of N need to be carefully kept secret. The decryption exponent is just like um, the situation we had in the more simple exponentiation cipher. It's just the it's just the multiplicative inverse of seven mod phi of n. Because remember, we are using these as exponents and we want them to cancel out as exponents. And the exponent slot, the periodicity is phi of n, not n. Okay, so that's what the first place I went to Wolfram Alpha. Um, this would not be a hard calculation, really, using our just by hand extended Euclidean algorithm techniques to find the multiplicative inverse of 7 mod 2760. But it's a little laborious and likely to, to have some arithmetic errors. So I just will ask Wolfram Alpha for 7 inverse mod 2760. It gave me 1183. Okay, so now how do I, how do I encrypt? Really simple. Once this is all set up, it's very much like the exponentiation cipher with the prime modulus. I'm just going to take my base number, and I'm going to raise it, oops, raise it, caret, to the encryption exponent. And then I'm just going to do mod 2867. So now we really take mod that actual um, product of primes. Okay, and it cranks for a minute and gives me 291. Okay, and then I'm just going to change that to 715. Everything else is the same. And going to get a 92. Okay. So there we go. So that would be the message. 291.92 would be the encrypted version. And the cool thing about RSA is I can give someone N and E as public information, and they could encrypt this message to 291.92. And then theoretically, I'm the only one who should be able to break it. Now again, with these small numbers, that's not really true because n, you can actually just brute force factor that and recover p and q. But the key thing is to find the decryption exponent, which we'll use in a minute, I took the inverse of e mod 2760. 
That's private information, not mod 2867. And that private information, pretty much the only practical way to get it, for large numbers at least, is to actually factor n and get p and q and take p minus 1 times q minus 1. And that's believed to be very, very hard at this point. OK, so now I'm going to check the decryption. So I'm going to take 291. So if somebody gives me this message 291, um, I'm going to use my secret decryption key and see if I can decrypt it. And indeed, first thing's coming out 1511. This is something you should always do, even if you aren't interested in the decryption per se, um, to check that your calculations are actually make, making sense. So 92 through the decryption exponent, 2867. And indeed, we get 715. And we see that the message reads, OK, go do your plan. Um, execute the super secret plan. All right, so that's one example. Um, I might do another example, but this sort of gets the, the, uh, the basic idea.